10 months on YouTube, over 45,000 views, and almost 200 subscribers. And now, we've got our first ever hate comment. Why do you always start off the video with that ultra cringy gay, hey, please stop. Well, you know what? That gives me an idea. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Richie here, and today we're gonna do something awesome. Now, just a few hours ago, something terrible happened. I was just running around, working on my build, minding my own business, and all of a sudden, a creeper appeared. And I grabbed my bow, I was ready to fire it, and I pressed Q instead of right-click and threw it at the creeper. And the creeper promptly blew up and destroyed my bow. But here's the thing, since I've managed to build that new XP farm a few episodes ago, I was already at level 100, so getting a new bow of the same caliber was absolutely no problem. And because of that, well, I've started to think that we're doing too many things the hard way, and we've been doing that for too long. So today, I'm going to make an overworld mob farm and just work on automation in general. And sooner or later, we should have a much more efficient build that will get us tons of resources really quick. Now, there are a lot of mob farm designs out there, and by far the most common one is Mumbo Jumbo's design, known simply as the Mumbo Mob Farm. And well, I'm not going to use that. Why? Probably just because everyone else does, and I want to do something different, but I do have a design by Il Mango, which works more than twice as efficiently, and looks like it's going to net me around 27,000 drops per hour. Now, of course, 27,000 is the perfected rate, and mob farms are a little tricky in this way. You see, in survival, you're going to build a mob farm high up in the air so that mobs can't spawn, but the higher up in the air you build a mob farm, the less likely it is for mobs to spawn. So the ultimate mob farm would be on the ground. You'd TNT a massive hole in your world, and that would net you about double the drop. So even though our mob farm runs at 27,000 drops per hour, in reality, on our survival world, we're only going to be getting about 17,000 drops per hour. And maybe, just maybe, after we collect drops from this mob farm, someday we'll decide to TNT a massive hole in the world, and with that, we can build a truly epic farm. But now that I've said that, I think I'm getting just a little bit ahead of myself, because this farm is going to be OP, and it's going to be completely epic. So without further ado, we're going to build up to the first level and see how this farm works. Now, the farm I'm planning to build today is a simple flushing-type mob farm, which does what it says on the tin. Mobs spawn, water comes out, and then the mobs fall off the edges. The mobs are then going to fall and hit a platform somewhere along the lines of that spruce log. All their items will drop, they'll be sorted, and everything will be good. And to make this farm more efficient, we're going to build several layers of a setup like this, and then AFK way up in the sky above them. So we have just the layers and the platform loaded, but not the caves underneath, which means this farm will essentially be the only place mobs can spawn on the server. And to make everything just a little better, we can see our base from this platform, which means when we're AFKing way up there in the sky, and this tower over here is finally complete, we're going to be able to see it, and it's going to look awesome. But as of now, we have a ton of stuff to do until this build is anywhere near functional, which is kind of obvious as we only have one layer. So what I'm going to do is hop on my second account, and we're going to build this in a time lapse.
My gosh, you know, it always fails to escape me exactly how big the projects are I'm getting into in this one. Well, it's definitely no exception. Let's fly down here and look at what we've created. This thing is massive. It's massive, and it's not even complete. Now, originally, I was planning to make this farm 16 layers tall, like it was in the tutorial where I first saw it. I think what we're gonna do, though, is build a 10-layer version instead of a 16-layer version, because honestly, 16 layers is a lot. It's actually the most you can build for this type of farm, and honestly, I don't know what I would do with that many drops, but I'm gonna pop up there and try to finish this build. I might take a nap, take a break, and then come back, because this thing is scary. The guy who designed this actually designed the most efficient farm in Minecraft, so he likes to go big, he likes to make big scary builds, and even though this is his simplest mob farm, ah, it's kicking my butt. Alright, so all our layers are done, and the last thing we need to do is put a roof on this thing. And what I'm gonna do is make a regular size roof, and then extend it outward, and the reason for this is that during the day, these edge slabs are actually pretty bright, and mobs can't spawn on them. But if we extend a roof far enough out, it'll always be dark. So I'm gonna do that, and I will be right back. Alright, this farm is not far from completion, but there are a few things we need to do. Obviously, we need to fill in this entire platform, but there is one other thing that will boost our rates, and that is putting trapdoors on the ceilings of every layer. Why does this boost our rates? Well, because it stops zombies and witches from spawning entirely. Now, zombies, not that big a deal, no one likes rotten flesh anyway, but witches are a big problem for farms. Now, they won't drop that much from this type of farm, but they have more health than all the other mobs, meaning I'd have to move my killing floor way lower, which would really affect my rates. So once we get this platform done, I'm afraid we're going to have to build a makeshift tree farm, farm up a ton of wood, and coat the inside of every layer in trapdoors. So it turns out, I've got a problem. A big, big problem that could have easily been avoided if I was not an idiot. Oh my gosh. So we have darkened all of the spawning platforms in there. Monsters can now spawn on all of them. And we need to go back in there for a long period of time. So I guess the only thing to do is pop up there and see how bad it is. It may, though, be entirely filled with mobs, in which case I'm dead and I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get the water buckets in here. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get the trapdoor in here. And I'm really stuck. But fortunately, at least for now, it doesn't look too bad. So we're going to go over there as quickly as we can because once we get over there... <gasps> oh, no, 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 no! Good job, Richie. Okay, try number two. We're getting closer. I'm gonna return fire. Okay, I didn't need to. He jumped off the cliff himself. And saved us all some time. Alright, we're almost there. We're almost there. Nailed it! Nailed it. And now, oh dear, all I have to do is fight off the mobs inside of here. 
So now, ladies and gentlemen, we are just about done. All our buckets are placed in. We're missing five or six layers of trap doors, but we'll have to get to that in the next episode. But for now, what I want to do is just rig up some sort of redstone on top to get this going. But the first thing we're going to do is a test. When we press this button, everything should activate. All our water buckets will activate, and our mobs will just rain out of this mob farm. Of course, that is if we did it right. And we've activated it. Let's fly down and see exactly what this thing does. Of course, we can't really see anything because it's a blizzard. But there we go. There are some mobs raining down. There's a baby zombie. And I only have three hearts. You know what? I'll get back to you after I die. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our farm is basically operational. I still need to put in some redstone. I still need to put in the landing platform and the AFK platform up top. But besides that... We are good, and the hard part is done, and very, very soon, this whole thing's gonna pay off. But unfortunately, guys, this thing is gonna have to pay off in the next episode, because I'm out of time. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, make sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more of my completely derpy adventures in Minecraft, then hit that subscribe button. But until the next time, guys, this has been Richie, I am underwater, and I'm out. I'll see ya.